Okay. So can have, uh, everyone see this? The West Side Test Anxiety Scale? Yes. Yes. All right, yes. nice. So um, again, welcome everyone. This is the anxiety, the free anxiety support group. And we're gonna be going over a few worksheets to help us manage our exam anxiety. I know this exam could be uh, anxiety provoking because it's important, right? We get the world open up to us when we pass this exam and um, whether we took it before and uh, we didn't pass and we're feeling anxious about taking it again, or if we never taken this exam before and we're like, ah, I really don't know because you know if I fail or da 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 da. So we're gonna go over uh, some worksheets um, to really help manage that test anxiety. And again, I'm gonna send this out to everyone, but if you have a, a piece of paper or anything like that, you wanna follow along, um, uh, let's do it. And what I have in front of us right now, again, is the West Side Test Anxiety Scale. This is actually uh, from a gentleman, uh, Richard Driscoll. Um, and uh, we have permission to use this um, as long as, of course, we uh, give him credit um, and visit his website. Again, I'm gonna send all the information out after this group. But I thought this was really cool where it helps kind of label where our anxiety is at. Think about when we're working with clients, right? And we're using um, the anxiety scales and everything to see where their uh, anxiety levels are. We're gonna do the same thing for ourselves. So again, if you have a, a pen, paper uh, to follow along. So uh, again, the West Side Test Anxiety Scale, rate how true each of the following is uh, of you uh, from extremely or always true to not all or never true, use the following five point scale. So you see right here for number five, we have extremely always true all the way to one, which is not at all or never true. So for number one, the closer I am to a major exam, the harder it is for me to concentrate on the material. The closer I am to a major exam, the harder it is for me to concentrate on the on the material. Would you say that's a five, meaning it's extremely always true? Four, which is highly usually true. Three, moderately sometimes true. Uh, two, slightly seldomly true. Or one, not at all, never true. So we will put that in there. And let's say when it comes to uh, uh, these uh, tests and everything, let's say we get extremely anxious, right? So I'm gonna label it right here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give ourselves a five. For number two, when I study for my exams, uh, I worry that I will not remember the material on the exam, right? Five, starting on the left, this is the most extreme and going all the way to the right, which would be a one, is the lowest or just not at all. So let's just give it another five, right? Let's just put it all the way to the extreme. Three, during important exams, I think that I am doing awful or that I may fail. Are we giving that a five, meaning extremely always true? Four, highly usually true. Three, moderately sometimes true. Two, slightly seldom true. Or one, not at all, never true. And again, we're just gonna, just uh, I'm gonna label it a five. Let's say we're really anxious because I really wanna help us uh, work through this. Um, I lose focus on important exams and I cannot remember material that I knew before the exam. Again, all the way on the left, that's a five, meaning is that the highest? And all the way to the right, that's a one, that's the lowest. Uh, but for this, again, we're just gonna put a five. I finally remember the answer to exam questions after the exam is already over. We got a five, meaning the most severe over here, all the way to one, all the way to the right, um, meaning not at all. I finally remember the answer to exam questions after the exam is already over. And then for six, I worry so much before a major exam that I am too worn out to do my best on the exam. Again, all the way to the left, most extreme, all the way to the right, um, not at all. And I'm gonna just scroll up a bit to, to show us. Uh, number seven, I feel out of sorts or not really myself when I take important exams. I feel out of sorts or not really myself when I take important exams. 
And again, all the way on the left, most severe, all the way to the right, not at all. And then eight, I find that my mind sometimes wanders when I am taking important exams. Here we have nine. After an exam, I worry about whether I did well enough. And then we have 10. I struggle with written assignments or avoid doing them because I feel that whatever I do, I will not be good enough. I want it to be perfect. So again, we're just gonna scroll back up. Five is on the left-hand side, extremely always true. Four, highly usually true. Three, moderately sometimes true. Two, slightly seldom true. Or one, not at all, never true. And we just put uh, fives all the way through. Oop, got this one right here. And then uh, with that score that we got, the sum of the 10 questions. So since we put uh, for this one right here, five just all the way through, five times 10 is 50. So for the sum of the 10 questions uh, for this right here, it will be 50. So you can add up your score, um, your scores for each of these questions. And then uh, for this one right here, right below it, oops, right there, uh, test anxiety score, this is the sum divided by 10. The sum of all the numbers we added up divided by 10. So right here, let's say since we have a 50, 50 divided by 10 is five. And again, this is by Richard Driscoll. Shout out to him for creating this. What does your score mean? So on the test anxiety score uh, from the 10 item scale, again, we take uh, all the numbers that we have here for our scores, we add them all up and then we divide by 10. So this is how we interpret our anxiety scores. Uh, if we got between a one and a 1.9, this is comfortably low test anxiety. If we got between a two and a 2.5, this is normal or average test anxiety. And if we got uh, between a 2.5 to 2.9, this is high or normal test anxiety. A uh, three to 3.4, this is moderately high. Some items rated four equals high. We have a 3.5 to 3.9, this is high test anxiety. Um, half or more of the items rated four equals high. And then for the last one, uh, from a four to a five, this is extremely high anxiety. Um, and then again, items are rated four, which is uh, high and five equals extreme. So since for our example, we labeled everything fives, because again, all the way on the left is uh, extremely always true to these questions. So we added it all up and we got 50. We divided it by 10, which is five. So let's say for argument's sake, uh, we have extreme anxiety. It's the highest of the high, right? The highest of the high. And now um, what do we do about it? What do we do about it? Um, this is a good place to gauge where we're at, right? Just like how we say meet the clients where they're, where we're, where they're at. We wanna meet ourselves where we're at. We may know we're anxious, but where's our exactly, uh, where is our anxiety levels on this scale, right? So, and again, I'm gonna send this out to everyone. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and bring up another one. Bring up another one. And don't forget to uh, mute yourself uh, if you're uh, not talking just to help with uh, the background noise. Uh, so this is really cool by the Beck Institute. Um, they released this, it's free, and this really breaks down coping with anxiety and they have very helpful um, tools in here. And we're actually gonna go over after we read through this, a quick read, uh, read we're gonna go over uh, some Socratic questioning, again, all part of the CBT uh, coping techniques to help manage our anxiety. And then we're gonna have a discussion about it afterwards. Um, actually, let me uh, exit up just to make it easier to read. 
Okay, uh, quick read. So what are signs of anxiety? It's like, we know ourselves, but how much do we really know ourselves, right? When we talk about those early warning signs of that increasing anxiety, we may know it's there, but what do we know about our anxiety? How does it work? Is it more physiological signs? Is it more so um, in our mind? Does our hand start to sweat, right? So we're just gonna break it down a bit and then jump into some exercises. So when it comes to uh, what are the signs of anxiety, if I interview for this job, I might freeze and make a fool of myself. Um, I haven't heard from a family member. What if something happened? What if uh, he was in an accident? What if, what if? If I don't leave, I'll get more and more anxious. If I have a panic attack, I might die. I better think about what might go wrong. If I think about, and then we insert a fearful event here, I'll fall apart. If I don't engage in the compulsive behavior, something bad might happen. Um, and it'll be my fault. Uh, sure, uh, such are the thoughts that sweep over those who suffer from anxiety disorders. Anxiety indicates fear of some type of danger. This sense of threat is often accompanied by a wide range of physical symptoms, which are distressing in themselves. Um, uh, short, uh, do, 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 accompanied by range uh, stressing themselves. Uh, shortness of breath, increased heart rate, dizziness, nausea, sweating, dry mouth, uh, tight throat, muscle tension, et cetera. And what is the nature of anxiety? Notice how on the left-hand side, it was a lot of what if, um, if this happens, that happens, a lot of concerns, right? And when we talk about this exam, I know one of our biggest concerns is, you know, what if we don't pass, right? What if we don't pass? What if we don't, um, uh, be able to engage in these opportunities that come with getting the license. And we want to be able to manage that because when we're taking the exam, we want to be able to manage those anxious thoughts so it doesn't impact us when we're taking the exam so that we can uh, strictly focus on the questions that are in front of us. So what is the nature of anxiety? Emotions communicate information and motivate us for action. Anxiety tells us that we're facing a challenge, a challenging situation and provides us uh, with the uh, physiological energy to meet that challenge. Everybody experiences some degree of anxiety, which can be helpful. For example, having anxiety before a big presentation at work will likely motivate you to prepare more thoroughly, hopefully leading to a better performance. However, anxiety can be problematic when it's disproportionate to the situation. People who suffer from disproportionate anxiety have certain characteristics in common, they perceive situations or experience as dangerous in some way and predict negative or threatening outcomes. Usually they try to avoid these situations or experiences. Often they become anxious about feeling anxious. As long as they can avoid certain situations or experiences, they experience temporary relief from anxiety. In the long run though, avoidance keeps the anxiety disorder going. People think, if I hadn't been able to avoid this, then something bad would have happened. So when we're looking at this, right? And we're talking about the nature of anxiety, we may shy away from the situation of uh, pushing back our exam test date, right? As it gets closer, let's say we have the exam on Friday and we're like, oh man, it's, uh, it's Tuesday, it's Wednesday, it's Thursday. Yeah, let me just reschedule, right? And we push it out. Or we may not schedule it at all because we have the thought of what if things just don't go our way? That anxiety feeling, feeling so uncomfortable where it's like, ah, now nah, I'm okay, I'm okay. And we may feel better in the moment, but then after a while, it's like, hey, we kind of, you know, we need to do this test thing, this, this, this is LSW, this LCSW, whatever it may be. And that anxiety starts to creep up again and it just becomes a pattern. So we wanna be able to manage that anxiety and address it appropriately. And going through here, they talk about the benefit of CBT, CBT, CBT. And we're actually gonna use uh, two of the, we're gonna complete two of the uh, uh, strategies to help manage our test anxiety by using the CBT. So I'm gonna stop sharing now. And now I'm going to bring up, I'm going to bring up this helpful sheet right here. I'm in the Beck Institute to become a certified CBT therapist. And 
uh, we go through a bunch of modules and we actually use the CBT model on ourselves as clinicians, where we have to complete um, the modules, the exercises, and <laughs> it works. <laughs> it really does work. And I thought this would be a great opportunity for us social workers to use it on ourselves. I know that not all social workers are therapists, um, but for myself, I practice, I, um, I uh, provide individual therapy to clients. And I'm like, wait a second, let's use this to help the tribe, to help myself, to help the tribe uh, succeed. So with this module one, lesson one for uh, uh, CBT, the cognitive model proposes that it is not a situation that directly impacts how a person feels and what they do. It is their perception of the situation or what uh, they are thinking, the automatic thoughts that just seem to pop in their minds. Uh, when clients are in uh, psychological distress, many of their thoughts are unhelpful uh, or inaccurate or both. We help identify the automatic thoughts that clients have about a specific situation by asking what was going through your mind. Identify automatic thoughts when there is an increase in distress or when clients are engaging in unhelpful behavior. So when we use it for ourselves, think about those anxious thoughts that pop into our mind. Think about those anxious thoughts of what if this happens? What if that happens? Because internally our thoughts influence our emotions. That's important because our emotions influence how we behave slash act. That's why people often say, I'm in the mood to, or I'm not in the mood to, and whatever the, the exact details of those behaviors are, are being influenced by our perception and how we're feeling about how we're perceiving things. So imagine if we're having those anxious or just flat out unhelpful thoughts um, in regards to the exam. We're not feeling as motivated to study, so what's our behavior slash action? Not studying, procrastinating, pushing back the exam. And we wanna combat that because again, we wanna overcome our anxiety, manage it, go in there, pass the exam, get our license and continue through our uh, social work journey. So we're gonna use some skills applied to ourselves to help manage that. And again, you guys are gonna get a copy of this. So they have a nice model for us right here this situation and <laughs> uh, feel free to use this with uh, anything in our lives. But as far as the uh, this exam goes, um, the situation for us, the situation would be taking this ASWB exam, whatever version of the exam we're taking. So we will put that right here. We will write it right here. Then the automatic thought or thoughts that pop into our mind. When you think about taking this exam, when your exam date is getting closer, what automatic thoughts you notice kind of pop in your mind? The negative unhelpful thoughts of, ah, I don't know about this, maybe I can't do this, should I reschedule? And list them, the automatic thoughts that just pop in our mind. And what was our reaction? We wanna put whatever emotions we were experiencing right here on the left and the behavior right here in the middle and if we experience any uh, physiological symptoms. So for example, uh, if someone is feeling really anxious, uh, their hands might start to sweat, they could do um, uh, racing heart rate, uh, start to sweat, uh, pace back and forth, right? A variety of things because, you know, don't tell me about this person's anxiety or that person's anxiety. What does our anxiety look like, right? Because you know you, what does your anxiety look like? And this shows how powerful our perception on reality can be, no matter how we're perceiving it. Because think about uh, someone that has to give a big speech, right? Talking, we're familiar with talking, right? Everything's fine, but the moment they call our name, you know, no one turned up the heat, but now we're sweating like crazy, right? No one hit us in the stomach, but now we feel like we got a pit in our stomach. Where'd that come from? That all came from the perception of like those anxious thoughts of, man, they call the name on stage, it's time. What if I mess up? What if I, I, I talk and they're bored? What if this happens? What if that happens? Oh, man, I hope I remember my lines. Am, am I gonna, uh, if I'm gonna be too much on this side of the stage, I gotta make sure I balance it out. How about if someone starts to yawn, right? All these thoughts, all these negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts start to go through our mind and our body starts to respond to that. So again, we wanna identify how does our body 
respond when we feel that anxious feeling coming on. So for example, um, one of the things they have us doing the Beck Institute is posting the form. So let's say the situation that's uh, anxiety provoking for someone is posting in a forum. The automatic thoughts going through this person's mind, this is great. Uh, posting on the forum is such a huge benefit of this course. I'll join, I'll join this online community and I'll be able to trade ideas with people. The reaction, the emotion, unspecified positive emotion. The behavior, since we're feeling good about it, we would post it a forum. And there's no physiological response because we're feeling good. That's like, let's keep it going, right? And when things are flowing, we want to keep them flowing as much as possible, right? But what happens when it's the other side of it? Again, the unhelpful thoughts, because while positive thoughts, a positive perception can definitely influence our mood and influence positive and productive behavior. On the other side, like we we're talking about, same situation, thinking about posting in the forum, what are the automatic thoughts popping up in our mind? If I post, people could be critical of what I say, right? And what's our reaction? On the emotional end, we start to feel anxious. What's the behavior? Avoid posting. And what's the physiological response? Increase heart rate, right? So whether it's more on the positive, more the negative slash unhelpful, or more the neutral end, we want to be able to identify what's going on with us. Mastery of self, right? Because when we know what's going on, we're able to address it more effectively um, and manage it so that uh, it can work in our benefit. The anxiety starts to decrease in severity when we go over these exercises we're about to go over in a second. It decreases in severity. We're able to manage it and go into that exam site and do our thing. And again, this could be used with essentially anything, um, but as it relates to this exam, we want to be able to identify where anxiety is at with that, with that anxiety test we did earlier. We're seeing how internally our thoughts, our perception of reality in relation to this exam, how it's having an influence on our thoughts, our mood, and our functioning as a whole, and we're going to learn how to combat that. So when we go here, Socratic questioning. This is one of my favorite uh, exercises to do. Um, there are two kinds of cognitions, automatic thoughts and underlying beliefs. Um, they are usually specific to a situation. Beliefs are generalized ideas, which may be in an actual words that go through your mind, or they may express your unverbalized understandings you have, especially of yourself, others, and the world. Socratic questioning is a method in which the therapist uses carefully selected questions to help clients evaluate their thoughts. And again, um, we're not working with clients at this moment, uh, we're working with ourselves. So we're gonna evaluate our thoughts. <laughs> and we're gonna go through Socratic questioning and we're gonna go through uh, one more. We're gonna go through uh, one more uh, over here of examining the advantages and disadvantages of a task or activity um, can help you discover obstacles that are getting in the way of a client. But again, for this exercise for ourselves, taking steps towards achieving their aspirations. And for us, it's following through with taking the exam, passing the exam, and moving forward in our, our social work journey. And after analyzing advantages and disadvantages, ask the clients, or in this case, ourself, what their conclusions are. So after we do this, it's like, after doing all this, how do we perceive it now? You know, the, the, the glass of water half full versus half empty. Someone that says, hey, that glass of water is half full versus someone that says, hey, that's half empty. Both are correct. Technically the glass of water is half full and technically it is half empty. But the way we perceive it, that has a different influence on our overall functioning because if we, um, if we more so perceive the glass of water as half full, that's more in the optimistic realm, right? That's more of, ooh, it's half full. So if I'm drinking and if I'm still uh, thirsty, there, there's more room for, uh, to add more water to it. Versus if we're viewing it more in that kind of pessimistic view of it's half full. It, it kind of gives that, that notion that it's not enough, where we're gonna drink, oh man, it's not enough. And that's gonna put us in a not great position. 
We want to be able to not lie to ourselves, but kind of shift our perspective to a more distressing, um, distressing uh, reality where it's not as stressful on us. Um, and we're going to do that right now. So I'm going to stop sharing. And we're going to bring up the exercises. And I actually want to uh, call in a tribe member for as a volunteer. Uh, we're going to do this together. And of course, I'm going to send this out to everyone. But we're just going to go through it and see exactly how to use this and how we can apply this to ourselves to help manage our test anxiety. So uh, can I have a volunteer? Uh, one person, uh, uh, anyone, anyone. Yeah, I would like to volunteer. All right, nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Please you. Thank you. <laughs> so with a uh, Socratic questioning, uh, we're going to first start off by, oh, let some more people in. Uh, we're going to first start off by examining the validity of the thought. And remember, what validity, think of uh, like, like, like its value. Is it valid, right? This thought, how valid is this thought? This thought, how valid is this information that we're perceiving, right? So first off, what evidence do you have that your thought is true? So when it comes to this exam, what's a, a anxious thought that you have about this exam? Yeah, so I took that, I'm taking the LCSW. I took it for the first mm -hmm. time and I found myself like going quickly, reading very quick. So mm -hmm. it's based on experience. Okay. So the last time I took the exam, okay. Um, is there any other evidence uh, that your thought is true uh, in relation to the exam? Yeah, when I'm doing the practice test, I have to pause myself because I'm, I'm responding very quickly. So I'm only reading one time, but now I'm trying to read twice, three times so I can pause myself. Mm -hmm. So you have to uh, uh, pause yourself uh, when taking the practice, practice exam? Practice test, yeah, when I'm doing practice test. Okay. And that's the thing. There are usually we're getting this from somewhere uh, more times than not, right? Where we may we may look at a factor and say, this is true. This is a very important exam. This, uh, I need this, I need to pass this exam to uh, go further in my social work career. I need this for my job, right? I wanna make more money. Those tend to be true and that can fuel the anxiety as well. Okay, uh, any other ones to add for here? Uh, when it comes to those anxious thoughts about the exam, possibly failing the exam, everything? Um, hi, Ray. I second guess hey, myself. Second guess. Second guess. Yeah. I second guess second myself. Guess definitely myself a big definitely one. Up. And anyone else? Uh, what evidence do you have that your thought is true? Think about that anxious thought that unhelpful thought that you have in relation to the exam, what are some of, uh, what is evidence that your thought is true? In my case, based on previous experience taking the test. Mm -hmm. So we got the exam. Anyone else wanna add one to this list? I would say based off of, oh, sorry. I would say based off of other, like the statistics of people, um, not passing the exam that came out recently. It was like a survey that said like only 40 something percent of people um, who are minorities pass the exam. Mm -hmm. So the data that came out about the exam, right? We can look at that and be like, wait a second. Even if we never took the exam before, we can look at that and say, oh, I don't really, uh, I don't really know about that. Mm -hmm. That's definitely valid. Any other thoughts um, that pop into our mind when it comes to uh, our anxious thoughts about taking this exam? So I was gonna say, I know she said the last time I took the exam, but for someone who's taken it three times. So I feel like it's the number of times. Absolutely, I'll put multiple next to here, mm -hmm. right? Because like you're saying, if it, it's not like we, um, 
it's not like it's coming from nowhere. If we took it one, two, three, four times, and we're just like, what's going on with this exam? How we're approaching it? That can definitely be anxiety provoking. Um, and I heard uh, somebody else. Um, for me, it would be financial, the financial aspect of it. Um, this would be my third time taking it and the cost that I put out for study prep and um, taking the exams and even just signing up for the exam, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. No, 100%. That's why I put the money with all these wise because you're absolutely right. Where how much it is to sign up for the exam? Like 200 and something? Something like that? Yeah. You, you, oh, uh, you talk about the money it takes to um, even register for the exam and everything like that, like the whole sign up process. Then you talk about the study material, uh, whether you buy a book, you get a course or attend any of these study groups that's money and that adds up. So 100%, especially if we're taking it um, multiple times where I wanna make it so that our, the next time we take it, we pass. So we don't even have to invest any more money into, into this right here. So uh, money, definitely a big one. Um, anyone um, Ray, else on this list? Mm -hmm. Ray, I would like yeah. to ask, um, you know, listening to someone um, who might have taken it before, that can also be a deterrent and kind of make you feel those stuff. Or not believing mm. looking to someone who might have taken it before. Mm. So Definitely add that. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, uh, so I heard uh, somebody else. Yes, that's what I was going to say. Um, I know people that are so experienced and they have failed like three times. And I look at them and say, if they didn't pass it, there's no way I'm going to pass it. Mm. So when we look at, um, so when we look at um, someone else and be like, oh man, uh, if they didn't pass it, there's no way that I'm going to pass it. So notice how those anxious, negative, just simply unhelpful thoughts start to enter our mind. And the goal isn't to stop it, right? The goal isn't to stop it, it's to manage it. And when we're doing these exercises, we notice that the weight the severity of those thoughts, they decrease. They're not as heavy. They don't linger around our mind as much. They don't have much of an impact on our mood and our overall functioning. Um, but oh, oh, we're going to break this down, man. Uh, any one, any Ray. other ones? Mm -hmm. Yes, right. I, I would one. say I have, I'm sorry. I would say the, the sense or the feeling of letting yourself and others down. Mm. Definitely a big one. Definitely a big one. Ray, I saw in the chat, there's a few comments regarding, do I know enough? Am I prepared? Is the content overwhelming me? Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, so readiness for the exam, because when we talk about these topics, it's, so we can categorize it into, what is it, like the four sections, like the, uh, the, the four major sections, but within those sections, there are sections within those sections, like subgroups and subgroups and subgroups. And that's one of the concerns people have of, okay, if I know a certain amount about a topic, how deep do I have to dive within that topic, within that, that subgroup, just in case if I get a question like that on exam. And I'm still gonna bring this up. This, this is living rent free in my mind. Shout out to the tribe member that mentioned this of, um, uh, I think it was, uh, uh, Lissette, was, uh, was it you that mentioned about pica, where uh, someone eating ice, um, technically that will fall in the mm -hmm. category of pica because it's non-nutritious and pica is mm -hmm. about uh, someone eating food that's considered non-nutritious value, that's not like really edible. And since ice doesn't have nutritious value, that falls under the category. And I'm like, wait, what? That would have threw me off. Sound like a, like a trick question or something. I have one. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, employer pressure to take mm. the exam. So being, having anxiety and worry about maintaining self-sufficiency. Mm, I, that is a big one. I've gotten emails from tribe members where they say, hey, Ray, I need, listen, I'm not just trying to pass this exam because I want to go further in my social work career. I'm trying to pass this exam because I've been at this job for X amount of years. And now they're like, hey, we need you to kind of get this license. And it's like, wait a second, I've been out of school for I don't know how long. 
I've been practicing doing a great job for I don't know how long. And now I have to study, find study material, study, pass this exam, just so I can continue doing what I've been doing. That's definitely pressure. I just want to add to that, Ray. Um, for me, it's not only the added pressure from an employer, but it's the contingency offer of a position based on passing the exam. That's my mm. position right now. How can that not make someone anxious, right? And the answer is it will make us anxious because we're human, right? Where we're talking about, hey, right, would you feel anxious if you're in a position where you have to pass this exam to either get employed or uh, no longer be employed? Right? I mean, that's like a, oh, so it's really like an all or nothing type of thing, right? I have to pass this exam by this date or not fun stuff happens. Like, got it. I I'll work on that. I have one. Mm -hmm. My age. Um, by the time I decided to go for the for my master's, I, I was already fifty. So sometimes I think I'm too mm. old, too old to pass the exam. <laughs> so, uh, like we were talking about earlier, like you branched a bit where. Um, being out of school for a period of time, um, believing that we're too old to pass the exam. And listen, that brain's working, so <laughs> we're gonna work it, right? We're gonna go in there, pass the exam, we're breaking it down, but it's a real factor, right? Especially when we've been, we haven't been in school for a period of time. Because again, we're out in the workforce, we're doing our thing, we're helping clients, we're adding value to the world. And then we get tapped on the shoulder and it's like, oh, time to take an exam. And it's like, oh, an exam? how long has it been and you know we think about those other factors and it's a recipe for anxiety we have hey. any other ones we want to add to this hey oh uh, ray what's going on man um hey, hey. you kind of discussed it all a little bit already but then it just go along with the money part um i'm here in located in um georgia and mm -hmm. one of the things that the part of the money and process part is that when you don't uh, pass, and this, I'm just giving a, a, just a, a small testimony reference to me, I didn't pass, this is my third time taking it. So when you don't pass within a year, you gotta do the whole application process all over again. So mm. I would say that's definitely a, 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 a discouraging reference to me because when you do the application all over again, you gotta ask people for the references and they gotta do that all. So the humility part of it is definitely a part that is definitely hitting my anxiety. So that process with the humility and stuff is definitely uh, a target with, with, with myself. Mm, I didn't even know that. And uh, again, how can that not be anxiety provoking? Or I'll just say, just uncomfortable, like whatever emotion falls under that uncomfortable umbrella. And I didn't even know about that. So that uh, that's 100% an aspect of it. Anyone else want to add to this? I have something um, to add. Um, so I'm in North Carolina and they changed the testing where you could not, you cannot sit down for the test until you get all 3000 hours of your clinical experience. Like right when I graduated with my master's, it was like the end of 2020. That following year, they changed it. So you have to get everything, your hours, your supervision, just to sit and take the test, like everybody is expressing, preparing for it, buying study materials, turn all this stuff into the board. Like the board is like wanting all this paperwork, wanting you to, it's just a lot. And that's tedious just in itself. And then I also feel like the format of the exam strikes everyone's anxiety because it's his first, next, best answer choices and it could be any of these choices and they all sound good to me at least to me they all sound good all of these would be something that I would do if I was practicing this so I think that also trips people up is that you know the exam is a completely different format and like everybody is saying whether you just graduated it's been years since you graduated like a lot of it is just stuff that was when you were in school so it's just very frustrating <laughs> Like how I feel like they keep changing the finish line every time we get to a point where we're like, okay, we ready to take the test. Then like you said, then we're, okay, we're not ready because now we anxious. It's just a lot. <laughs> oh man. And, and what you said about the uh, um, 
about even like the setup as far as like getting everything together to to be able to take the exam. Uh, I don't know if, how many of you guys actually saw this video, but the very first video on this RayTube channel is showing people how to register to take the exam in New Jersey. Because I remember when I was trying to take my LSW, I was looking around like, how do I sign up for this? I'm doing, I'm asking people, doing my Googles, everything. And I'm like, this was such a annoying process. And I was like, all right, I'm gonna make a video. This is the first video on rate two, literally saying, all right, this is how you sign up for the ASWB exam. Now, to my knowledge, they have changed things that made it a bit easier, but um, I definitely feel you with that. And as far as like the format goes of this exam, just to, before we dive into the exercises and everything, with the format of this exam, it's a different way of thinking, right? Because we may look at this situation and be like, man, I've been practicing uh, in the field of uh, social work for X amount of years. Like, uh, does this mean I'm not a good social worker? Does this mean like, I don't know what I'm doing, I'm incompetent. And it's, this is a different way of thinking. Don't believe me, wanna test it out? When's the last time before this exam, someone asked you in regards to social work, when's the first uh, thing you should do with X, Y, and Z? When's the next thing? What is the best thing? What is the most like, should? I imagine you would have to think really hard to really recall that if it ever happened at all. And when we're doing our job, our day-to-day -day tasks, especially when we've been there for a while, we know it like the back of our hand. And if anything were to happen, we tend to have the option, the answer choice of speaking with a manager, speaking with a supervisor about the situation. But with this exam, again, a different way of thinking about how to approach situations that we may either A, have no real experience in, or B, the answer choices that we're given, with, we could possibly be thinking about other answer um, choices or options that we would do in this scenario. But when we're restricted to just these three or four answer choices, and we're not too familiar of how to kind of navigate that, that tends to make it challenging. But again, we're going to break it down. We're really going to break it down. How to I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Right? I was, oh, sorry. I wanted to add on one more thing. y'all. I'm sorry. I know I'm talking and we got like five minutes, but this is really like helpful and it's really been on my mind. So if, if I'm venting, I'm sorry, y'all. But another thing that I want to add is not only is I feel like the exam format and the study materials we are investing money in it, it's not built for, like somebody said, the statistics. I'm sorry, it's just not mm. built for minorities and people of color. I'm sorry, it's, it's geared to our counterparts. So like you're saying, Ray, we gotta go in there and we gotta think completely differently because we already have to be prepared to be twice as good as them just to pass it on the first try. And now we got mm. statistics and data to prove that, hey, y'all don't really pass it. And oh, we're really sorry that y'all don't. We'll try harder to make it not so hard. It makes sense. And then on top of that, like most of the test is human behavior. I'm 29 years old. I, let me tell y'all something. I went to undergrad in 2011. I can't tell you nothing about Eric Erickson, uh, Sigmund Freud, uh, Piaget. I, I don't remember any of that because I was like 18 when I took these courses. Like, come on now. And like I said, now y'all want us to wait to get all this experience on top of me being out of school? It's ridiculous. Okay, y'all, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> I want to add something real quick before it. I want to yeah. add that my, especially my anxiety rises more because when you've taken it more than one time and you're going in there, you're like, oh my God, what's going to happen now? And that's really frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. So being out of school um, for, for years and going up again, take an exam multiple times because all of that is what's contributing to our anxiety, right? It's not like we're anxious for quote unquote, no reason. We're just like, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm, I'm fine in every other area in our life. Like the last time we took an exam was fine. Oh, I just don't know why we're feeling anxious. No, all these bullet points right here is what's contributing to our anxiety. And this is just some of them. We didn't even list every single thing that could be applicable here. This is just a bulk of the things that um, can be contributing to our anxiety, whether it's, and it, even if it's just one thing, because like we were talking about the employment and everything, <laughs> that one reason is anxiety provoking enough. So especially if we have multiple ones on here. So I feel you guys. And that's why I wanna do my best 
to give you the information that you need. And, and I say, talk to me like I'm four. Whenever I'm learning something, don't use these fancy languages and all that. Talk to me like I'm four. Make me uh, say it in a way where I can understand it. Let a four-year-old can understand it because that's how I like to learn. So that's how I kind of approach uh, making my videos and the material as a whole. Um, but ultimately, uh, until ASWB uh, changes things, because I know they're going through a process, they say they're revamping things, which is good. Um, but unless that's going to happen tomorrow or next week or anything, um, definitely want to prepare us to take this, uh, take this exam so we can pass. And right now, just manage that anxiety because I know that's a major factor for us. And let's do, let's do one more. Uh, anyone want to add one more to this list uh, that's not mentioned here? Oh, dang. Oh, man, dang. I have one more. All right, we'll do we'll we'll do we'll do a good two more. Uh, uh, so someone uh, someone that hasn't gone want to add something to this list? I no. do. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I, I'm the other Lisa. I need to. <laughs> um, really quickly, the mm -hmm. the Pearson Test Center itself, just mm. the idea of going there to test is anxiety provoking. I can, oh my gosh, I go in that room, I, I don't feel this test four times and I'm tired of investing in their um, staffing fees. Mm. <laughs> but just that test center is anxiety provoking. I'm actually considering applying for an accommodation because I study with music on. I can't sit in silence and do a test. Mm. You, you, you know, when you mentioned the, the testing site, um, uh, one of our tribe members actually mentioned that about their testing site where um, whether it's like really crammed, whether it's just like really hot in there, what, wherever they're hosting the testing site, the environment 100% has an influence on us because internally our thoughts are influ our thoughts influence our mood, which influence our behavior slash actions. Externally, so everything outside of us, the people, places, and things, which is the environment, that influences our mood and our overall behavior slash actions as well. So that 100% uh, impacts us. Um, Jay? Hey, no. Oh, oh uh, you go and then uh, Jay. I go? Mm -hmm. Um, That was me. I brought that up yesterday to you. Uh, yeah, the um the testing site is just very like sterile and it's like, like, like if you're going into some kind of like either surgical procedure or like jail and yeah. um and the people there, they're, they have no emotion or not, you know, and it's like place this like robotic, very robotic. And you're already, you can't breathe. Your mouth is dry. It's just, the test site is very small in some places and it's dreadful, honestly. Mm. And yeah, like, I don't know. Uh, I'll hold off on that one. I'll hold off on that one. Uh, can uh, I, can I make a comment about that? Um, the testing site, they, they changed it and they allow you to bring a, a snack or a juice. But when you take your break, because they recommend that you take a break because there's so many questions, your time keeps running. Mm -hmm. So you're too nervous to take the break because you're afraid that you're going to run out of time. So, yeah. And mm -hmm. I brought my water and I, I wasn't allowed to take it with me. I mean, I wasn't allowed to drink it, so. Oh, wow. You're like, yeah, you don't need that water. You don't need that H2O, you good. You got oxygen. Uh, Jay, Jay, uh, Jay Barnes. I was gonna say for me, it's with the anxiety, but once I start taking an exam, I usually calm down. It's, I get bored because the exam is so long. So like mentally, my mind, once I get to like question like a hundred, um, I start to get bored. Even if I get up and go take a break, it's like, I'm just over the exam. And it's interesting that usually with that specific exam, you have to get in a range of 90 to a hundred. So, but you still have like a whole nother 70 questions that you have to answer. So it's just the fact that they make the exam so long and then just mentally you're just drained from sitting there and just taking that exam, even though the passing rate is usually around the time like of when you start to get boredom with mentally. So it's just interesting. Like, I feel like they add those extra questions 
intentionally to like kind of discourage you mentally and whatnot so mm. Th that fatigue is real because before okay this exam aside when's the last time you took a four-hour exam oh like I really have to think I, I almost want to say maybe you know, high school maybe, maybe high school like the standardized tests you know like uh -huh that's about it like but not even like SATs or anything were that long I don't think mm. it, I mean yeah because when we're thinking about it, like I really can't think possibly high school so exactly what you're saying four hours and you go on the test site and you go in there you come out is the next day you're just right. like this, this, is a, this is a lot and uh, I definitely have my thoughts on ways that we could go about changing the exam, but uh, I'll save that for another video. <laughs> um, <laughs> but the fatigue is definitely uh, important because I've heard from tribe members say, um, and even myself when I was taking the exam, like you said, going through it, going through it, you get to like question 100, 110, and it's like, man, I still got a whole exam to take, like a whole nother exam to take, which is the rest of the exam. And that's a big, uh, a big important factor of how we're fueling our body. Remember, as human beings, we have two natural um, energy sources, uh, what we eat and sleeping. And mm -hmm. when those are uh, impacted, it makes it hard to function as a whole. So we wanna make sure, uh, just as a side note, when we're going to the ex exam, make sure that we're eating nutritious food, stuff that kind of will give us that energy to power through the exam and uh, making sure that we get that good night's rest. Um, however we do it, even if let's say your exam is a little later in the day, you want to take a quick nap before, make sure you set your alarms, maybe even tell somebody, make sure you wake me up, everything like that, you know, so that we're well rested to go in there and pass that exam. I have one more, right? All right, we'll do one more, then we'll, uh, we'll go to the exercises. What we got? Um, so being that I've taken the exam a couple of times, I've noticed my anxiety rose when I noticed the criteria for the scoring increased mm. so I needed 98 maybe the first five times and then the last time I needed 99 so going to take it again is like is it going to change again well I need like 102 next time mm. so major anxiety there mm -hmm. and, and notice how when we were reading earlier about the nature of anxiety right where if someone said, is it the number? Is like, does the number 100, 102, 99, does that cause the anxiety? And it's like, well, no, like I've seen the number 99 before. I've seen the number 100 before. That, I'm like, oh no, the number 100. And that it start feeling anxiety creep up. Doesn't necessarily work like that. But in terms of the score that I see that I need to pass, right? That's definitely anxiety provoking because there's more to the, there's more to the thought than, oh, it's just a number right? How we're interpreting it, how we're perceiving um, that reality. Um, definitely a big one. Ray, also pick, to piggyback on the scores, just the thought that you could fail it by one to four or five points, or even just under 10, that's anxiety provoking right there. It's like you're praying to the Lord and the baby Jesus that you pass by one point. Mm. You, you know, uh, and then piggybacking off of your point, people usually pass or fail this exam by one to 10 points. And you're right, where it's like, oh man, whether it's that one point, that two point. And that's why for some of these questions, I even say treat them as freebies, like the medications, even uh, any of the recall-esque definition term type of questions, treat them as freebies so that we can get them right because um, that can be the difference between whether we pass or fail, but you're right, it is anxiety provoking where it could be that one or two or whatever it is uh, points off. Uh, you're right um, on the money with that. I feel like- I have, Oh, go ahead. I feel like when I failed, it made me think like, am I really worthy of being a social worker? If that makes sense. Like mm. my, you know, friends in their field, like, you know, they they pass their nursing exam, this and that. So it made me think like, are you really worthy of like, you know, being one? You know, I don't know. It's just, that's what's running through my mind lately and like, um, it makes me not want to study, but then like something in me is like study, but then it's like when I study, my mind wonders and I'm just like, what is happening, you know? So that's just my little input of what's happening. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the biggest thing. Um, 
I don't want us to give up on ourselves. And the thing is, with our anxious, unhelpful thoughts, like everything on this list, we can use this to fuel those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts of, yeah, let me stop. Let me stop. Because nothing on this list is wrong. Where if I'm like, guys, do you, okay, don't pull my leg. Have you really took this exam multiple times? Uh, do you really have to pause yourself when you're taking these practice questions? Do you really second guess yourself? Uh, the data that came out, do you really think that's accurate data as far as um, people not really passing? Is money really a factor, right? Is it really, like, yeah. Like all of this stuff, all this stuff is anxiety provoking, right? I don't want this to discourage us from being the best version of ourselves. Because I want us to make more money, be able to help clients that we want, be able to work with different populations, be able to open up our private practice, do whatever our uh, having this license will allow us to do. And managing that anxiety, that's a big factor to it. Because I don't want our anxiety to be the reason why we don't pass this exam. Like I want us to pass in general, but I don't want those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts creeping in where it's just taking away our focus from passing this exam, from studying for the exam, from calling our study buddy, from tuning into a video, from actually selecting the answer when we're taking the actual exam and then going through that 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 that, that hectic uh, second guessing ourselves and then start to think like, oh wait, I really need to pass this because if I don't, so I should it be A, should it be C? I want to move all of that out the way so we can just strictly focus on passing this exam, um, answering the questions that's in front of us. Because, I mean, ah, this is real. Let Again, I'm going a, I'm to a, uh, send this out to everyone after this. Check this out. Let's go to the second point. What evidence do you have on the other side that your thought isn't true or isn't completely true? Right? Anybody went, Ray, what are you talking about? We just went through those things. Those things are true. What evidence do you have on the other side? Right? So kind of like play lawyer against yourself that your thought uh, isn't true or isn't completely true. Right? So when we think about this exam, what are some things we could do to kind of uh, uh, play lawyer on the other side? And that kind of gets us to the second one. Is there another way of looking at the situation? But when we say, what evidence do you have on the other side that your thought isn't true or isn't completely true? So when we say, uh, let's put one right here. Um, is there anyone that we can kind of say, uh, this isn't true or isn't completely true? Or are we all like, nah, Ray, that's all, that's, that's all kind of true. Um, I would say that right now that I'm in my field, like in a mental health um, position as a clinician, the way I even interact with my client, it's like, I've been doing this for years, but I'm about to be two years and I went from no experience at all to being put into like a community based private mental health, like dealing with clients with different trauma, and things like that, and like providing the best services ever, even when they do like my um when they call clients to see how I'm doing like I've been getting great reviews so it's like I am capable of being a social worker because I know how to like effectively communicate and assist them and like you know all their needs mentally emotionally like, you know just everything so I would say that would be my input on that mm -hmm. right there is no way because I know some tribe members I said they've been in the field for over 10 years doing their job getting great reviews, praise from uh, uh, their agency, from their clients, most importantly, right? There's no way you can tell me that person isn't a great social worker based off of their experience and all their information because they didn't pass this exam. You can't, you can't give me the apples and oranges that way, right? D did we possibly study, quote unquote, wrong? Did we, um, could we work on the approach to the exam? Sure, but as far as, hey, you didn't pass the exam, so like you're not like good as a social worker at all. Like, no, no, no. Nah, you're gonna have to give me some more convincing than that. You gotta show me some. <laughs> Tell me you were tardy to work or something. You gotta, you, you gotta give me something if you're gonna say that you're a bad social worker. Um, what's another one for this one? What evidence do you have on the other side that your thought, like these ones up here, isn't true or isn't completely true? What would you say? 
One thing that I like to think about is I have passed other exams before. I am studying for my LCSW, but I've already passed my LMSW. I passed it on the second time. And even though I felt very anxious and it was very nerve wracking, the entire process and very expensive as other uh, tribe members have reported, I still passed. And I try to think within myself that I'm not going to be a quote unquote better therapist once I have my license. Um, I just use that as a form of grounding. Uh, of course, I will be um, able to reach a greater population and be able to hopefully one day have my private practice. But the day, the next day after I pass, I, it's not going to be like, oh, you know, you all of a sudden know so much more or et cetera. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's the uh, thing too, where after, <laughs> and for those that passed the exam, like you said, whether it was the, um, um, the first level of the exam or if it was um, wherever we're at, it's not like we passed this exam and then we turn like super saiyan, like, oh, I passed this exam, now I'm suddenly like uh, social work supreme and, and all of that, like we, our knowledge just suddenly like shoots up to the highest level and, and the clients are getting the best, uh, you know, uh, services possible compared to the great services we are already giving them. Um, so it helps kind of put it to uh, the context, but uh, nice. All right. Yeah. What ev mm -hmm. Other evidence is that I found your channel <laughs> and <laughs> I know the material. No, yeah. So I feel much more prepared for the test. This time. Appreciate it. So I found uh, Ray Tube. <laughs> uh, Ray, I would also like to say that, you know, in my years of working in, under social work um, in different capacities, when I look at some, and please don't be offended, <laughs> when I look at some of these social workers, I work, I, I'm in New York City and I work with a hospital mm -hmm. system, a public hospital system. Mm -hmm. And when I've engaged some of these other licensed clinical social workers and asked them basic questions, they are lost. Some mm -hmm. people don't even know where to start. And then when I say, wait a minute, are we doing this? Are we doing that? Da, 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 da. And then, oh, okay, I guess that's what it is. Like, in other words, I, I've never taken an exam, so this is going to be my first time. But um, some of them are, are like, oh, who do you think she is? And I'm saying, myself, well, if this dodo can pass their exam, then I know I could, <laughs> you know? Because, yeah. it, and that's, that's pretty much what I'm thinking. I mean, I have been studying. I've been watching you from the time I discovered you how many months ago. I've been watching mm -hmm. you a lot, listening to you. And, and your technique and your patience is just, again, and I sent you this in the chat you're very passionate about how you deliver your information I truly appreciate that but that's that's my my drive is if I can work with some of these like these clinicians who don't know how to navigate the system and I'm getting through left and right and getting all the accolades not that I'm looking for it from the patient that just boosts my confidence that I got this and um yeah that's that's what I'm going on mm -hmm. no and and, and if there's one thing, like if someone like, you know, what's one thing that Ray to Ray says and stuff like that, I always say, read the code of ethics, read the code of ethics. Did I forget to mention, read the code of ethics, not just for this exam, like definitely for this exam, that's like one whole section uh, for the exam is sprinkled throughout all, all levels of the exams, read the code of ethics. I, I promise you, you're not, you're not going to regret it but it's also applicable to us outside of this exam. Like I've referred to the code of ethics in my private practice where I'm like, mm, how do I navigate this situation? This is pretty different. And then I refer to the code of ethics and then also seek supervision um, because supervision doesn't necessarily have to end just because we're not interns or anything anymore. But the code of ethics blueprint guidebook, read it. We definitely want that knowledge so that we can be uh, competent social workers and knowing like, oh snap, how do I handle a, a conflict of interest? Oh, snap, uh, physical touch. Can I engage in physical touch that's non-sexual? Can I engage in physical touch? And these are things that we really wouldn't know unless we read the code of ethics. So for example, with physical touch, again, non-sexual, yes, we can engage in physical touch uh, with clients. Like think about what physical touch is, handshakes, high fives, fist bumps, like let's say we're working with children and stuff like that, right? We can't do any of that. No, we can do that. We just want to, even hugging, we can hug. We just want to make sure that it's appropriate. So for example, 
a client that's uh, terminating, they met their treatment goals, you guys did a lot of great work, and you know, give an appropriate hug, perfectly fine. Now, if a client's coming in every day talking about where my hug at, that's a little different, right? And then of course, making sure there's no risk of uh, uh, psychological harm, where for that client, let's say they experienced like abuse and everything, reason why they're, uh, they've been seeking services, for that client in particular, we may not want to hug them, even though it's an appropriate setting, like at termination, we may not want to hug them because for that client in particular, it could cause uh, more harm than good. And not for nothing, I'm going to ask. I'm not just going to run up and hug somebody anyway. You know, I'm going to ask. But, um, but yeah, code of ethics, code of ethics, code of ethics. I want us to all be competent in code of ethics. We might remember, we may, we may not remember in great detail, like we were saying earlier, Erickson, PJ, go PJ, go PJ, go. That's how I remember it. But, um, but we definitely want to make sure we know that code of ethics, you know, so we, we ready for anything as far as that goes. But uh, we got this. Um, one more for this one. Any evidence on the other side that your thought isn't true or isn't completely true? Because it, cause it, it, it has some validity to it. We're not talking about, oh, no, it's just a fault. It's just a lot. No, no, no. Um, yeah, anyone for this one? It's about motivation too. And I found like when I was studying by myself, like, and I found this YouTube video. So they gave me the motivation to study. So that was mm. the lack of motivation was what made me fail the first time. Mm, so the lack of motivation. So, yeah. um, so you said uh, watching the videos, the motivation came back a bit. Yeah. And I want to join the group this Saturday. So before taking the test. Oh, nice. Nice. So the motivation came back, right? Because sometimes we could think like uh, it's gone, it's never going to come back um, because we uh, failed the exam or you know whatever the case may be, but it can come back just like with our emotions, right? Like on a scale of one through 10, let's say one's the lowest, five is average, 10 is the highest. Even if we're feeling like a 10 out of 10 because things are flowing, things are going great in our life, we know that realistically, we're not always going to be at a 10 out of 10. And on the other end, we know that we're not, we're always not going to be at a one out of one. We're more going to be around our baseline, whether it's like a five or six or something like that. Um, um, but just in the same thing with our motivation. So just kind of keeping that in mind. And when we go to the second one, see if there's a different perspective like we were doing. Is there another way of looking at this situation? So let's really think about that. We know this exam. I believe all of us, or at least most of us have seen the, the, the stats, the data that came out and everything like that. We know all this about this exam, right? Is there another way of looking at this situation as far as, I'll just say th this exam, is there another way of looking at this situation? What do you think? I'd like to share. Um, there's a little phrase that I like to use with myself when I'm going through a problem, not so problem situation. And I just tell myself, mm -hmm. This is a great problem to have, um, mm -hmm. relating it back to, you know, how exciting that I get to take this exam and how exciting that I've reached this level in my career and education level to be able to be prepared to take this exam. Regardless if I pass or fail, it's still what a great problem to have to be able to take this exam. Mm, I like that. It's. So again, it's kind of shifting the perspective where when we take a step back and they were like, hey, what is, a, what is something that's really in your mind? And it's like, ah, passing this exam. Now, don't get us wrong, like passing an exam is definitely important and we definitely want to make sure that we uh, do what we need to do, pass an exam and continue with our social work career, our journey. Um, and another perspective on it is, you know, we're in a very fortunate position where if this is the problem that we have, it's like, there's many other people that would much rather would like to switch problems type of thing. And again, this is an opportunity to really further our career because every time we take it, it's an opportunity. And think about with a lot of problems, um, if we technically have this type of upside of that problem, if you, know, if you know what I mean, of being able to further our career and everything. Nice, is there, uh, how about another one? Is there another way of looking at this situation? I'm gonna take it to our past. I'm gonna take it to our pass. Take it until I pass. And I believe that 
you know, <laughs> the license is already ours. We just waiting to get it. It's already ours. We just got to do what we got to do to get it. How about one more? Is there another way of looking at this situation? I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. Mm -hmm. As opposed to rushing through the exam. Nice, nice. And again, with our perspective, right? It's not that you're wrong, right? We're just like the glass of water half full versus half empty. The, per the people that say it's half full versus the people that say it's half empty, everyone's correct. It's not about proving who's right, who's wrong. We just wanna shift our perspective so it can have a different type of influence on our mood and overall functioning and put us in the best position possible to pass the exam. And that goes right into number three, uh, decatastrophize the situation. And remember what catastrophize, even the wording, right? Catastrophize, it's like, like, the, like the worst case scenario, everything happening. We're gonna decatastrophize the situation. So kind of take the, the weight, the severity, the oomph out of it. If the worst happens, how could you cope? So let's put it to the extreme. Let's say it does come true, fine. I don't want this to happen, but we go in there, we take the exam and we don't pass. Uh, if the, and that would be considered like the worst, right? If that happens, how could you cope with that situation? And you can even add, um, if we didn't pass it in the past, how did you cope with it? Taking a break from the exam. I, that's what I did for one month before I started to study again. I took a break. Mm -hmm. uh, so we could take a break, uh, a, a break from it, right? We don't have to be go, 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 go mode. We could just take a bit of a break um, with the plan to go back into it, into our studying. Okay, well, what about another one? If the worst happens, again, saying like we don't pass our exam, um, how could you cope or how have you coped in the past? I would Not say, be so hard on yourself. Just don't beat up on yourself. Take it as a challenge for yourself. Wait. Showing ourselves grace and taking it as a challenge. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will not see it as the end of life because I still need to move on. Mm -hmm. Right? Does it suck? Absolutely. Is it the end? Absolutely not. I would say when I took my, I wanted to pass to make more money, but I failed, but I continued to keep my job. So the, I failed, but I didn't lose my job. I still had a job to provide for me and my family. Mm-hmm. Now, I know we were talking about earlier where some people, they need to pass for their job, um, for the job sake and everything like that. Um, and if we're not in that situation, um, it's important to keep in mind as well, where it's like, okay, do I want to pass this exam? Absolutely. How much would our, how much would our day-to-day, -day, our life be impacted if we don't pass this exam? And again, I'm talking about the people that is not in that situation, like you were speaking to us, like, you know, Life is pretty much still the same for the most part. The only difference is we get those additional letters uh, uh, after our name, right? But in a definitely, we're going to get those. We're going to get those. But this is how to take the weight off of it. Because sometimes we can put so much weight on the situation where it, it's hard to function. Think about in terms of sports, when they talk about the pressure, the pressure, the pressure. It's the fourth quarter. It's the, it's the, it's the, it's the last play of the game, right? And they talk about those clutch moments where there are some players where they can struggle in those moments naturally because it's an anxiety provoking situation. We want to be able to manage that anxiety so we can, you know, tune out all the noise and everything, all those negative unhelpful thoughts, true or not, so we can be in control and do what we need to do to focus to answer these questions correctly and pass the exam. Um, 
but yeah, definitely kind of moving that fluff out the way. What's another way, um, if the worst happens, how could you cope? And how have you coped in the past if we don't pass this exam? Uh, how will we cope or how have we coped in the past? Uh, working towards correcting your mistakes, like when if you know you rushed through the test or if you know you um, like really didn't read through the questions, just as you practice and start studying again, add that in. Mm -hmm. I love that one because, again, like I said for myself, the first time taking the LSW, I got the Akbar book. I read it from cover to cover. I literally said during that time, because I was in the master's program the last semester, that's the earliest we're able to take it when we're about to graduate. I remember asking people, I'm like, professors, everything. I'm like, uh, how do we study for this exam? And, you know, some professors and everything say, like, you know, revisit your textbooks and everything like that. And I was just like, is there like another way to, or do I just read through all the textbooks again? And uh, someone mentioned like the Akbar books. I was like, oh, okay, so purchase whatever the latest one was at that time write it from cover to cover. And then I was like, wait a second. I think while there was great information in that book, I think I studied wrong. Cause I remember seeing the exam, I was like, whoa, okay, yeah, I need to change up my approach, how I, how I approach this exam. So that is definitely a big one of correcting our mistakes if we found that we've been studying wrong or if there's just a more effective way uh, to go about it. Um, but that's 100% a great one. Any, anyone else for this one? If the worst happens, how could you cope? Um, or how have you coped in the past? Um, allowed myself to go through with the emotions, whatever I failed during that time or afterwards. I mean, I, I took it before in the past, I failed. I just allowed myself to go through the emotions with the, along with it. And it was discouraging at first, mm -hmm. but pick up myself back up again. And we're gonna do it until I passed this exam. It's not the end. That 100% because it's not about, it's not about not feeling, right? We're human. We're human, meaning we're going to experience emotions. It's not about, hey, can we like just stop feeling these uncomfortable feelings? I mean, like that would be great, but at the nature of it, it, it makes sense why we experience those things. So feel these emotions. We want to make sure that we manage it so we don't act on it. And when we when we talk about acting on our emotions, we're talking about doing behaviors that would just unhelpful, right? Where it's like, all right, I'm just not going to study anymore. I'm not going to contact my study buddy. I'm not going to tune into the videos. I'm not going to do anything. I'm going to just kind of push it aside. I'm not going to uh, uh, chase after my dreams anymore of being able to work with certain clients or open up a private practice or whatever the case may be. So definitely want to experience those emotions. Uh, one more for this one, anyone? Um, for me, I completely took myself out of social work. So I kind of like changed professions to take a break from seeing clients and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. I can find a job where I can find like, to even out my time and my stress to focus more on studying. Mm. Okay, so just kind of uh, revamp the schedule? Pretty much. Okay, and also this one, like you said up here, taking a break, um, taking a break from, uh, and I'm gonna say take a break, uh, and I'm gonna say take a break from social work. Because the type of work that we do um, definitely is heavy um, and it can be taxing. So being able to even take a step back from that is uh, definitely important. Nice, nice. And how about on the other side? Um, what's the best that could happen? Uh, what's the best uh, that could happen if you, what's the best thing that could happen if you, and we have uh, this one, uh, what's the most realistic outcome slash something in between? So just uh, bring this up a bit, bring this down. Um, what's the best that could happen if we, Career advancement, like we can get a better job. In my case, relocation, I can relocate to another state to practice. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, uh, actually, we're gonna uh, skip a little bit. Um, I wonder if we should actually no. Let's stick with this. What's the best? Uh, uh, what's the best that could happen? So let's say, um, let's say we did pass the exam. What's the best that could happen? Feeling accomplished. Mm -hmm. No more supervision. Feel like accomplished. I think the best thing that can happen is we set ourselves up for um long term success. Yeah. Making yourself proud. Mm -hmm. Salary increase. Helping others to get to like what do you say, Ray? Um, helping social work friends because we don't want to practice by ourselves. And so mm -hmm. I live by that and I look forward to helping others. Owning my own private private practice. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And, and that kind of ties it to this one right here. What's the most realistic outcome slash something in between? Because uh, we're talking about ultimately taking this exam, right? We're feeling anxious about taking this exam and where we identify some of the anxious thoughts that come up, which is right here. These are some of the anxious thoughts that come up that kind of support the, uh, when it comes to this exam as a whole. And hmm. then we talk about the evidence we have on the other side, different perspectives, decatastrophizing it. Um, and what's the best could happen? We, ha we have another one we wanna add to it? Yeah, I would say that um, you are meant to be a social worker, like this is for you. Absolutely, definitely a great feeling where it's like, all right, this, I'm, I'm living in my purpose. That's definitely a great feeling. Uh -huh. I feel like I would be a role model to my son who's currently going to school. He'll see that even as his mother is an old individual was able to accomplish a, co a goal, then he will not be defeated and can also accomplish that his goal as well. So I feel like I would be his role model. Mm, definitely a big one being that inspiration for, um, like was mentioned uh, earlier, being an inspiration for ourselves, right? Because we we accomplish this goal that we set out for ourselves, um, for the uh, other fellow social workers, and for the loved ones that's uh, closer to us. Like you mentioned with your son, because he's seeing mommy do it, and it's like, oh, mommy, um, she did it. And even if she there were some challenges with it, mommy didn't give up. Mommy, you know, stuck with it. Mommy passed. She she accomplished the goal she set out to to achieve, and. How can that not be an inspiration, right? So that's definitely a big one. Oh, we got one more. I think in some ways we can uh, compare ourselves to some of our clients uh, on the experiences of not. So uh, relatable um, uh, slash greater understanding um, of what the clients go through? Clients go through. All right, all right. And what about this one? What's the most realistic outcome slash something in between? Um, what's the most realistic outcome? So we're anxious about taking this exam um, what's a, a realistic outcome? What's a realistic outcome of taking this exam? Because remember, we're feeling really anxious. We're having these anxious thoughts about taking this exam. What's a realistic outcome as far as uh, when we think about taking this exam? How you feel in your mood after you pass. Once you look at the screen, see a score, <laughs> get up from the chair. That is her. For the weekend. <laughs> Will you cry? Will you go try to hug somebody? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh! Remember, uh, if you're uh, not talking, remember to uh, mute. Uh, 
Um, you said how you will feel after uh, taking after uh, taking the exam. Yeah. Will your mood increase? Will you cry? Will you sit there for a it while? It does. Take it all in. Mm hmm. Damn, will you uh, go hug somebody in the street? Mood will increase. Uh huh. Mm hmm. So the thing we're anxious about of like, oh man, like this exam and uh, take it or not take it again, right? But realistically, if we take the exam, if we actually go through with taking the exam and then we pass, I mean, we're going to feel amazing. We're going to be like, finally, like this is done. It's, it's passed. And that, uh, or at least for myself, when I look at that, I'm like, that's, that's a, that's a worth it reason, right? Like if it said, oh, you take this exam and uh, we don't really get a reward for it. Let's say at this exam, if you take it and you pass it, you get, um, I don't know, like a extra PTO day at work or something like that. It's like, no, nah, I'm fine. I'm not going to spend whatever money for it and, and study for however long and take it just to get like one PTO day. Like, no, nah, I'm okay. But to get a license and to be able to do more in the field and that feeling that comes with it, that's worth it to me. Mm -hmm. The validation of effort being put out. Mm -hmm. So more, so I'm going to say uh, the emotions, uh, the positive emotions. <laughs> positive emotions we will feel when we take and pass this exam. All right. Knowing that you secured a job will know that we secured a job mm -hmm. you know what i want to add to that if you don't mind we, we, we hey. talked about the anxiety of taking the exam right and Ooh. passing the exam so you're elated you have that excitement but then there's another feeling that comes behind it now you want that ideal job that is paying that ideal money and now you have to negotiate for that salary because they figure oh you're a new social worker so we're not going to give you that top pay that you know that you've been doing for how many years and they don't want to give you that credit. So that's another what set of emotions you're going to be doing with. Mm -hmm. Everybody, everybody, mm -hmm. I love I, rem I, I remember uh, <laughs> someone got talking. I can't uh, see who it is. Uh, <laughs> it's Jamara. I'm good with looking. <laughs> Jamara, can you mute yourself, please? <laughs> okay. Thank you, people. Thank you. Thank you. All right, nice. And when we talk about when we talk about the most realistic outcome, think about and again, this is this can be with any uh, anxious thought or anything like that. But think about when we're having these negative, unhelpful, anxious related thoughts, and it's like, oh man, if I if I take this exam, I'm anxious about taking this exam. But if I take the exam and don't pass, it's the end of the world, right? That's our perception. Now, imagine if it was real, as in literal, like, hey, if you don't pass this exam, the world just ends, like it's just over. We can have that perception, a really strong, not really realistic perception of a situation. This helps kind of put it back into a realistic realm and manage our expectations. Because yes, the anxiety is coming from somewhere. It's coming from somewhere. We're not just kind of just pulling this out of nowhere, out of thin air, right? There is some validity. There's validity to the thought, the anxious thoughts that we're having, right? We also want to make sure they're like, okay, let's take some of the weight out of like the, the severity of it. It's like, wait a second. Okay. What's some things that we can do? Does it really mean the end of the world if we don't pass this exam? Is there things that we could do differently? And that brings us to Look at the utility of the thought. What's the effect of telling yourself? What's the effect of telling yourself um, the not great thoughts? Like the, the, the negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts. Uh, when we tell ourselves that, like those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts, uh, what effect does that have on us when we tell ourselves that? What effect does that have on us? We increase our anxiety. It will get worse. We increase our anxiety. Again, not about lying to ourselves, but remember, 
half full versus half empty, more than one thing can be uh, true. Shout out to uh, DBT. It's like, what do you take when you get a black square and a white square and you put them together, you get a, not a gray square. You get plaid, like plaid, like a checkerboard because more than one truth can exist. We just want to shift from the negative unhelpful thoughts and focus more on the positive and productive thoughts. Not just about positive like, oh, this exam is coming up. Well, at least I have a puppy. No, wait, I mean, puppies are cool, but we also want to focus on the productive thoughts as well of things that we can do. I think it fosters lower self-esteem. Mm-hmm. Fosters lower self-esteem. And we mentioned that earlier, right? Where we can look at uh, this exam and let's say we didn't pass, we can look at ourselves as a social worker and be like, am I not worthy? Am I like a, a terrible social worker? And notice how that thought can override the fact that we've been in the field for 10 plus years, like it was said earlier. Uh, forget the praise that we get from our uh, uh, clients. Forget the the accolades and all that from the job and stuff like that. No, 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 no. Forget all that. No, no, no. We're good. We're good. We're good. Forget all of that. No, 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 no. Um, because we didn't pass this exam, we're like a terrible social worker now. No, get all experience out of here. All the accolades, all the nope, nope, nope. We're just not good. It's like I don't know about that. But when we're but when we're feeding fueling those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts, that tends to paint our reality. Um, and let's do, let's, do, uh, let's do one more. Uh, the utility of thought. What's the effect of telling ourselves those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts? Uh, let's get one more for here. We increase our anxiety, fosters lower self-esteem, and what else? Decreases our opportunity of passing. Um, it's almost like we psych ourselves out, right? We're telling ourselves, oh, I don't know about this. We're going to fail. We I mean, last time we did. And notice how we'll fuel it, those anxious, those negative, unhelpful, anxious thoughts with things that are true because they're not wrong. But notice how we're putting a lot of weight on those type of thoughts, which is influencing our mood and our overall behavior slash actions. So if we, and um, any symptoms that we're having as a result. So notice how if we're going there, kind of psyching ourselves out, oh man, we know what happened last time I did. I did fail that time before. And I, yep, I, I remember I did get that practice question wrong. And I, I I didn't know that. And then, oh, pica, like Ray mentioned pica. And I didn't know that um, ice, and because it has non-nutritious value that falls in the category of pica. So I didn't know that yeah, I'm going to fail. Like I'll take him up. Time out. It's not about lying to ourselves. We want to shift our perspective to a perspective that's positive and productive. The two P's, positive and productive. And the productive aspect is Okay, I look at my test scores, I see the areas I need to bring up, and I see how I've been previously approaching it. Like, let's say if um, maybe we weren't as consistent, maybe we didn't really understand one aspect of a topic, and then it had a few of those uh, questions sprinkled throughout the exam, or like, crap, I didn't really know this topic type of thing, um, so that we can be better prepared to go in and pass on the next, the next attempt. Um, and what could be the effect of changing your thinking? So just asking um, you guys, what could be the effect of changing our thinking about this exam? What do we think? What, what's the biggest thing it would do of changing the way we think about this exam? I, the way we approach it, being more successful with it. Mm-hmm. Increasing the chance of passing the exam, right? Because if we can look at as, uh, as something and say, you know what, maybe I approached it uh, wrong or if there's just, a, again, just a better way we can approach it where it's like, maybe I can do more practice questions. Maybe I can 
dive a little deeper into this topic right here, where it's like, I didn't really look at this topic before, but maybe if I dive uh, a bit deeper into it, right, there's more opportunity um, to do it. Uh, so ultimately increasing our chance of passing the exam. Uh, anyone for this one, another one, or it, does this uh, kind of cover it? More confidence, like we become more confident. More confidence, absolutely. And for these last two, uh, get some distance from the thought. If, insert the name of someone you care about, were in this situation and had this thought, what advice would you give them? So, you know how we say it's easier because, okay, take a step back. I'm getting into a psychoeducation move. Um, if you ever heard this saying, you know, it's easier to give advice than take advice, that's because the thought that we have in our mind it goes through, we all have a natural bias to ourselves, right? Of how we look at ourselves and how we look at the world. And especially uh, when it comes to our loved ones, when we look at ourselves, we can be very critical, very judgmental at times, right? This is saying, okay, let's take our natural bias out of it because we're thinking about ourselves in this situation. You're not in this situation anymore. Matter of fact, let's just say you're not even a social worker. You're a um, another profession over here, right? Nothing to do with social work. If a loved one, friend, family member, spouse, whoever, if if they came up to you, they came up to us, and they they're a social worker, and they're studying for this ASWB exam, and they're in the exact same place you are. But remember, we're not in this situation. We're all doing something else, right? They're the social worker. They're talking about this exam, and they're and they're talking about the challenges and how they're feeling about it. What would you tell them? Not, I would say don't give up because you already you already have the hours, the clinical hour, you did the courses, so it's only the test. I will tell. You already did everything, you just need to pass the test. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh what else will we tell a loved one? Again, they're in the whatever your specific situation is, um, they're in that situation, we're not in that situation, they come to us. What would you tell them? Remind them of their successes and other things that they overcame. And it's going to be another one of those things. Mm -hmm. Remind them of their past wins. And this is going to be another uh, win for them, right? Because, um, and it was mentioned earlier as well, where it's like, wait a second. I passed my, I believe, uh, uh, she said the LMSW. I passed my uh, the 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 earlier exam. Why can't I pass this one? And when I say why can't I, I don't mean like oh, why can't I pass this one. I mean like literally, why can't you? And how about this one? What would be good to do about this? So we talked about it. We processed it a bit. What would be good to do about this? What would be not just positive, but productive as well uh, for this situation? Uh, what do you think? What would be something uh, that we could do about this, this exam situation that would be both positive and productive? Continue to work at it. Continue to work at it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. join a community like this community to get to have the motivation community for support and motivation mm -hmm. can we say like self-care big yeah. one self-care yeah putting in quality time to get a quality outcome quality time to get a Quality. Or, or should I say quality time to get the desired outcome, should I say? No, I like that one. To get a desired outcome. We're going to pass that thing. All right. Counter the negative thoughts with positive thoughts. Okay. Mm. Decrease negative thoughts. 
and increase positive thoughts. All right. Any other ones? Let me overcome our fears. Huh? Like overcoming our fears. Mm -hmm. Overcome our fears, right? Because it's one thing to say like, ah, I can't do it. I'm unsure about this, right? But when we actually do the thing where it's like, we did it. We overcame our fears. We didn't think it was, uh, whether we didn't think it was possible or it was like, ah, this is too hard. I don't know about this. And we stick at it. We continue to do the work, which is the studying. We join a community. We do the self-care. We do the quality time to get our desired outcome. And we did that by decreasing the negative thoughts and increasing our positive thoughts. And we ultimately overcome our fears. And you want to talk about if our confidence, if our confidence slash self-esteem went down because it's exam, what is it going to say when you pass it? What is it going to do when you pass it and you're like, you know what? I overcame something. I didn't give up. I wonder if we'll be an inspiration to people like our son. I wonder if we'll be an inspiration to other social workers. I wonder if we will be able to help more people. Again, not just clients, but social workers as a whole. So there's, there's, there's a, and I'm going to put this one, the, the upside right? The upside to passing this exam, whether we took it, whether we never take it, uh, take an exam uh, yet, or we took it a million times, right? Think about the upside is like, I got it. Was it annoying? Sure. Was it really annoying? Sure. Was it super refreshing and all the, all of the above? Sure. But I got that license and I'm good to go. All right, and uh, this is a great list. And again, I'm gonna send this out to everyone. There's one more that I really wanna uh, touch on. So I'm gonna stop sharing. One more that I really wanna uh, touch on uh, for us. And then we'll, uh, we'll wrap up. Okay. So this has just like information on it, da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, social work test prep, which is cool, da, 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 da. But here, is where I wanna focus on. If internally our thoughts, positive, negative, neutral, if internally our thoughts influence our emotions, and that's important because our emotions influence our behavior slash actions, again, the things that we do or don't do, let's get some programming going for ourselves. So for this, I encourage us to create an affirmation card. Matter of fact, let me grab it uh, right here. In the Beck Institute, this is one of the first things they have us do. On an index card, um, the four essential guidelines for CBT to read before every therapy session. Treat every client at every session the way I like to be treated if I were a client. Be a nice human being in the room and help the client feel safe. Remember, clients are supposed to pose challenges. That's why they need treatment. Keep expectations from my client and myself reasonable. This is to be read before every session with a client and sometimes even afterwards just to help as that reminder. For ourselves, we want to keep information at the forefront of our mind. What information do we want to keep at the forefront of our mind? Overcome your exam anxiety by reminding yourself of your power through affirmations. Create an affirmation card or voice memo um, so like uh, with your phone, if you want to create a voice memo so you um, can listen to yourself if you like that better. Um, 30 seconds to a minute long. It doesn't have to be like a 10-minute dialogue. I mean, you can if you want to. Um, that includes what passing this exam means to you and the following affirmations. So again, what passing your licensure exam means to you. And then I will pass my licensure exam by remaining positive, productive, and consistent in my studies. I am confident and capable. I believe in myself, I got this. And just like with um, the four central guidelines, CBT um, a, a card to read before every session, I want us to read or listen to your affirmations in the morning, before you study and before bed. So literally your affirmation card that you create 
it stays at the forefront of your mind of your why, that motivation to keep you going. And just as a quick example for this one, it would look something like passing my life year exam means I get to help more people, further my career, and increase my finances. I will pass my life year exam by remaining positive, productive, and consistent in my studies. I am confident and capable. I believe in myself. I got this. You know, being able to read or listen or both to that, it keeps it at the forefront of our mind of why am I doing all this studying? What, why am I, you know, reading all this PJ code of ethic? Why am I doing all this? And this is our reminder. And it's speaking to us and it's speaking to our worthiness that we got this. That's why I have it over here where uh, it says over here, shout out to Ellie and L. This over here, keep in mind, I got this. I make sure to, uh, I look at this where it's like, I got this. I, 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 I know what I'm doing. I got this. I got our tribe. You know, we're going to be okay. We're going to be okay because it's okay. And we're part of this community and we're just going to keep going. So we got this. And I'm going to send a copy of this and the other stuff we went to, uh, we went over to everyone. And I want us to use these tools to help ourselves. And I'm going to stop sharing now. Oh, I didn't even realize. <laughs> I was looking, I was like, wait a second, it's like eight o'clock. This will be an hour group. Then I said an hour 30, then we don't go into eight. But um, um, before we uh, wrap up, and I want to hear uh, from you guys, just what are some helpful uh, tips that you've noticed that uh, help manage your anxiety? Again, it doesn't have to be um, therapy-based or anything like that. Even if you do this, you're like, hey, I do this, and this helps manage my anxiety. Um, what's something that uh, you guys have noticed have helped manage your uh your anxiety when it comes to this exam this is Jerica. so this will be my first time taking it on monday so for me just taking deep breaths like you said just say you know you got this you will pass i have wrote my name and put lmsw everywhere um just remaining positive while i um study and one thing that has helped me write is reading it backwards you have played a big part of reading stuff backwards <laughs> i have been getting it um, the medicines is very helpful. The two, seven, eleven, that all of that has been very helpful. And I'm very grateful for your YouTube channel. No, absolutely. Uh, I'm glad you found value out of it. And um, I love like making it real for ourselves because when we post those things around where we see those letters, those credentials next to our name, it makes it real. And it's like, again, it's already ours. We just got to go get it. So um Definitely good that uh, you found value out of it, and uh, I like that. Uh, anyone else? Uh, anything you, anything you currently do that has been helping manage uh, your anxiety? Um, I would say what I've been doing is praying a lot more, and understanding mm. God has the final say, and I shouldn't take things in my own hand. Just do my part, and He's gonna do His. I need to stop being lazy and stop being scared, and just continue studying like you've been saying and just keep praying and know that with faith it's going to be okay mm -hmm. definitely bringing our faith into it right and uh what's this saying a face without works is dead um i believe and like you're yeah. saying sometimes <laughs> sometimes situations can look uh intimidating i remember one of the uh the common things i would hear from tribe members because i felt this way too where um even looking at the code of ethics it looks intimidating because it's a lot of information and I remember one day I was like man freaking code of ethics ain't gonna scare nobody and I started to read it through and I was like oh this is pretty interesting oh it actually makes sense and then I'm like all right so when we overcome that um it just puts us in a better position gaining more confidence and we achieve our goals so I think it's I think it's good that you're bringing your faith into it and we're going to put in that work so that we can pass and earn our license so I think that's really good Uh, anyone else? Uh, techniques, strategies you use to help manage your anxiety? Like you say, to practice questions a day keeps the test anxiety away. <laughs> uh, doing at least two where, and I don't say that just because it sounds good, but I really mean like, you know, there's the education piece of the exam and then there's the practicing piece, which is doing the practice questions. I get it. We have our lives, you know, responsibilities, and, and we're studying the education side of, of the exam. Doing at least two practice questions a day helps keep the exam anxiety at bay. Two, 
not overwhelming. We're still learning information because we're reading the rationales and everything, how to approach the questions or how to approach the, uh, uh, yeah, the questions as a whole. So imagine if we're studying for two, three uh, months or more, doing at least two a day by default. I don't care if we do 10 on Monday, on Tuesday, we're still doing our two. And then one practice exam a month, that puts us in a really good position to pass, um, especially when we're studying like the education side of it. We're doing our two a day. And then we're doing that one practice exam a month. So we study for two months, we do two practice exams, we study for three, we do three practice exams, right? So that it really puts us in a position to uh, pass. But um, yeah, that definitely helps with the, the anxiety. Um, please keep posting your practice questions on YouTube because like your explanation, it does help a lot. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, it makes, honestly it makes me calm down to know like it's okay, even though, even if I didn't get the question right, the way you explain it, it makes sense for me to know, okay, next time I'm not going to make the same mistake. So your practice questions and how you explain it, that's how I'm able to do my two practice question a day. So, <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I got, I got some more cooking for you guys. I'm definitely going to be uploading some more uh, uh, practice questions. And uh, I don't want to call you up, but uh, Martha, I know you had uh, some really good, <laughs> you had some really good anxiety management. Uh, uh, techniques and like a, I also want to call it like a coping basket. Yeah. Um, so I shared this with everybody uh, when we stayed at the end of one of the groups on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So I, when I took the LMSW exam, I was having a hard time coping and getting through. And I literally just researched and I got two different types of like herbal teas and stress response capsules, they're all organic, non-GMO, and I tried it because I wasn't trying to like get any kind of chemicals in my system. And then I recently brought these patches, um, they're called Vici or VC, V-I-C-I -I patches. One is called Scattered Brain, and uh, it's uh, attention support and nervous wreck, that's what it's called. Mm -hmm. And um, and I've been using them and they're very helpful in, um, with my mental alertness. And uh, I take the teas literally twice a day and the capsules, at least uh, one capsule a day. And it helps me stay calm, stay focused while I ju juggle like the daily work routine to keep me focused on studying for at least an hour to two hours, um, you know, when I meet with my study buddy. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. And uh, overall, would you say it's worth it? It is worth it. For me, it's worth it because I'm a nervous wreck. And, <laughs> you know, and uh, when I start to feel that I'm getting closer and closer, that's when I start like the heart racing, you know, the dry mouth. And then I start to get confused or drawing a blank. And so this has been very helpful in that. Nice, nice. And, you know, um, you know, we call it like the coping toolbox, but having our own coping toolbox. So we have like our affirmations, uh, we have any um, vitamins or anything like that, uh, healthy products that we take. And, you know, having our own, again, coping toolbox where we do it, by default, not just when our anxiety is like shooting through the roof, like we, we wanna do it um, before the volcano is erupting um, so that it's used to our system and it's effective. And then of course, if our anxiety does start to creep up, we have we know exactly what to do. We go right to our coping toolbox and we can use those. It doesn't have to be just one thing. We can use all those things and it doesn't have to just be one time. We can do it multiple times. And this is all to manage our anxiety so that we can push any distractions out the way, put all of our attention on focus on what the question is in front of us so we can answer correctly and pass our exam and get our license because that, that's what we want, but um, that's really good. Um, anyone else? Last thing, any, any uh, anxiety techniques you wanna throw out there? I will. Um, mm -hmm. I've taken the LMSW and I never did this, but this time I, I'm going to do it before my test, maybe a week or two before my test date. The facility, if it's close to you, I would go in the facility because we're anxious when we go to the doctor mm -hmm. or new places. We're not, so I mean, aware of what's surrounding the, 
place. So I'm gonna go to the facility a few times because it's very close to me. And so mm. I can decrease my anxiety when I walk in on test day. Mm. So, so it sounds like a bit of that exposure, right? Like you're exposing yourself to the environment that you're gonna be in, you're getting comfortable with it. You're taking the, the, the intenseness, the severity out of, uh, out of the environment. Cause it can be like, oh, I'm at the test site. It, it's real now for that pressure. But like you're saying, because it's like close, you're going there and you're like, you know what, I, I, I'm used to this. I, I did this before, like I, I'm, I'm good. I think that's really good. Yes. yes. Nice, nice. Um, thank you everyone. Uh, I didn't, like I'm looking at my phone, I'm like, oh, I said an hour and we did like two. Um, I gotta get better at that. But um, thank you all for attending. Again, this is the free anxiety uh, test support group. I hope you guys all enjoyed and you got this. Like we're gonna continue to study, be consistent, be positive, productive. Join the Facebook group, find a study buddy if you don't have one. Or uh, if you already have one, we wanna make sure that we're using our study buddy effectively and just discuss the material, right? You got this. This is, we're the tribe, we're gonna support each other and we're here, we're here. Um, so as we wrap up, uh, thank you guys for attending. I plan to do more of these. So if you know someone that wanted to attend and didn't get in, it's okay, cause <laughs> we're gonna do more of these. But um, uh, thank you guys for attending and you got this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank All right, everyone, have a great rest Thank of your you. night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Hey, hey, Ray, have you thought about doing an anxiety group monthly? Monthly? Uh, I'll put a <laughs> poll. I'll, I, I'll put a poll a lot. Oh, man, y'all don't know me. I, I'll run another group. We'll go to like five in the morning. But, uh, uh, <laughs> I think we could do that. We can do that. So I yeah. monthly uh free anxiety group. Let's uh let's rock out. <laughs>